effective MDBs. It is so necessary to have better, bigger and more effective MDBs because the developmental demands from all across the globe is so high, these institutions will have to be better and bigger. This is also going to contribute to enhancing representation and voice of developing countries in the decision making. The second under the MDB strengthening of MDBs is the G20 Independent Expert Group on strengthening MDBs and this was established and it has submitted its volume one. The first report, their report consists of two volumes. The first volume has already been sub, uh, submitted. The report recommends a triple agenda that dovetails with a call for the bigger, better and more effective MDBs. The third point in strengthening MDBs is the agreement to collectively work towards boosting World Bank's financing capacity. Here the options will be explored that will deliver a powerful boost to the IBRD headroom to support low-income and middle-income countries. And the fourth, endorsement for the G20 roadmap for implementation of the recommendations of an independent panel on capital adequacy framework of uh, the MDBs. So the CAF recommendations are focused on enabling MDBs to use the existing resources effectively. The roadmap estimates, this is going to be of interest for the media, the roadmap estimates that implementation of the CAF and the measures thereby will potentially yield additional lending headroom of approximately 200 billion US dollars over the next decade. So through these achievements, India has harnessed the opportunity provided by the G20 presidency to effectively articulate and embed the priorities of the global south in the larger global conversation on the MDB reforms. I move to the second, laying the building blocks for a globally coordinated and comprehensive policy and regulatory framework for crypto assets. The global push for clearer policies on crypto assets has gained momentum under the Indian presidency and a global consensus is emerging on the same. The presidency will support the IMF and the FSB in, and FSB is also setting the contours of the regulatory framework for a globally coordinated approach to crypto assets. So the presidency with the support of IMF and the FSB is setting these contours. The IMF and FSB synthesis paper about which I've spoken to the media earlier, including a roadmap. On that, I just want to give my observation. This synthesis paper delves into how the policy and regulatory frameworks developed by the IMF and the FSB alongside the other standard setting bodies will fit together and interact with each other. This paper is now available in the public domain for all of you all to see. The third one which I'd like to draw your attention to is the financial inclusion and productivity gains through digital public infrastructure. India, as you all are aware, through the India stack, became the first country to develop all three foundational DPIs, the digital identity, the real-time fast payment, and a platform to safely share personal data without compromising privacy. So embedded this concept in the G20 financial inclusion agenda by formulating G20 policy recommendations for advancing financial inclusion and productivity gains through digital public infrastructure. This recommendation, this set of recommendations cover five aspects. Use of DPIs and accelerating financial inclusion fostering well-designed DPIs, regulatory and supervisory aspects of DPI, institutional and governance arrangements by DPI, 
and ensuring customer protection. So DPI has also been integrated into the G20 Financial Inclusion Action Plan, the FIAP, which will run between 2024 and 2026. That's a strong legacy of the Indian presidency. We also uh, assume the co-chair of the Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion, the implementation of the Financial Inclusion Action Plan, as well as the policy recommendations on DPI will remain as areas that will continue to be heard across the G20 Forum.